Hey, this is Tyler for uh, BelieveInJeep.com. You know, I've had this old uh, Ramsey Platinum 9000 for about 15 years. And uh, I've only had to fix it twice. Uh, once about six years ago. And then uh, a couple of days ago, I went to use it. And uh, the, the cable would spool out, but it wouldn't spool back in. So... I thought maybe it was the same problem I had last time and, and I'll show you here in the video what the what the solution for that was but it turned out that wasn't the actual solution we had to do some diagnosis and, and actually repair a, a couple of pieces back here so come with me I'll show you how we did that and how we uh, resurrected the Ramsey so I've grabbed my monster winch switch here and uh, as you can see It'll spool out just fine, but it does not want to spool in. Now I've checked and it's not the switch. So what happens with these is the solenoids in here. Sometimes they get, I don't know if it's corrosion or what, but the actual owner's manual, troubleshooting manual on this winch says to just whack them with something. and. Uh, that usually fixes this problem, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So, on this Ramsey Platinum, there are three Allen head bolts that hold the uh, this uh, solenoid housing up here. There are three on each side, and all three of these have to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This quarter inch um, Allen head bolts there are also uh, two small Allen head bolts or machine screws back here on the back side that hold this on so we're going to take those out as well that should So we can get this off. Oh. Bee nest in there. So these are our solenoids, and what it tells you to do is just give them a good whack. We're going to do that with the handle of a screwdriver, and we'll plug in our uh, winch switch, our monster big winch switch, and uh, see if it solved the problem. Okay, so the regular old uh, solenoid whack didn't fix the problem, so started diagnosing what else could be wrong, and immediately felt this the solenoid felt a little bit loose. So if you look right down here, this copper plate is actually cracked. So that's why I was getting intermittent service out of it. <clears throat> I could get it to come in and out occasionally when I would wiggle it. So we're going to have to pull that copper plate out and replace it. Okay, so there's my copper plate. You can see where there's been some arcing here. There's a little bit of uh, carbon build up where it's arced. But you can see how it's just fatigued and snapped. So we're going to see if we can fabricate a replacement for this. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, had some, just some copper plating that was the right thickness. In fact, it's slightly thicker, so I think this is actually going to be better. Just kind of laid this, uh, the old piece on there and traced it best I could. I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes, and after the holes are, are drilled, um, I'll trim it down and go make sure it's going to fit on the back of that solenoid, but <clears throat> I think that's probably going to do the job. So we'll go ahead and, and drill these holes. One, you, one little trick you can do when you're drilling out 
a thin piece of plate like this is just slide a, a board under it in your vise and then as you push down it, the, the plate's not gonna flip from side to side and then you can actually move this board back and forth a little bit if you need to, to do it. That's pretty good. That's pretty close to the original size. We'll go test fit it and make sure it's going to work. Alright, so I've test fit this on back there and it was such a pain in the butt that uh, I'm just going to leave it on there. I was going to show the install of it, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it on there. And uh, I just got to put the lock washers and lock nuts back on and then reconnect that fitting that you see there to the solenoid. Um, the angle is just so hard to get with the camera that I may not be able to show that. I also wanted to show you there's there's uh, several of these little connectors that's what brings the power to the back of the solenoids and a couple of these were loose and all I did was just re uh, crimp it, pinch them closed with uh, with a pair of needle nose pliers so that they would fit on the terminals back here tight again so I just checked all those to make sure that they were tight I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this one all right now for the real test. Let's see if, before we button this up, let's see if we actually fixed it. There's out. There's in. Looks like that broken strap was a problem. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to thumbs up our channel so we can keep these videos coming. Uh, don't forget to go visit bleepinjeep.com for all the best how-to videos on the internet and for great t-shirts and some funky parts, too. You know, Matt's got some funky parts. Go check out the site. Thanks. The winch kind of stranded me the other day and had to uh, wrap the cable around the bumper to get it home, but... We'll show you how we got it to fit, how we fixed it, and how we got it to work. You distracted me, cat. Please don't forget to subscribe to uh, bleepinjeep.com or pfft, subscribe to bleepinjeep.com. Uh, don't forget to visit bleepinjeep.com and for all the best. Oh, it's cutting off the circulation of my brain.